Hello everyone, this is a learn to play video on Pax Renaissance, second edition. First we will give you a general impression on how the game flows and then we will go into the most of the rules of the game. So in Pax Renaissance you are playing as one of the rich merchant families of Europe in the Renaissance period. In this game you are trying to earn money and to use your wealth to buy the influence of characters of this era. These characters are represented by by cards. You use the uh, abilities provided to you by those cards to achieve your goals, that is to try to get one of the five victory conditions. We'll go to the, through the victory conditions later, but most of them are achieved by a combination of the icons that are provided by most of the cards, these red bordered icons, or by using your cards to grab control of one of the kingdoms present in the game. There are 10 kingdoms, 6 in the west on this side and 4 in the east. How the game actually works, you have, you have two actions that you can do in each turn and the actions are uh, represented on your card. You can first purchase a card and the cost of the cards depends on their position yeah. on the market. Hey, you want to go through that. For example, this is worth one because I have to spend one money. Then this is worth two, this is worth three, and that's worth four, so on. You can so buy on. that for four coins. After yeah. you buy a card, at the end of your turn, basically the market is refilled by getting a, a new card from the, from the deck. Second action, you can play a okay. card from your hand and some of the cards have one of special abilities we'll go through them later yeah but the main thing is that you just place down the card and do the thing that you, that's you, at the bottom you have to put it either on the east or on the west depending on where the card is from this is a card from the ottoman you bought we bought it from the eastern side of the market and then you can also sell the card yes either cards coins. from your hands or cards from that you played already on your area you, so, they give um, them to Florence. Yeah, let's say I don't need this card anymore. I could just sell it and I put away the card and I get two Florence. Then you can use the Tableau Ops. So you can use all the actions uh, from the cards of one of your size, either yes. the, east, the east or the west. And this is yeah. where I believe that most of the perceived difficulty of this game comes from because there are many different actions you can do. Uh, is I, I think it may be a bit tough to remember them, especially if you haven't played the game much. Yes. But luckily, the game comes with a handy player aid. Yeah. Play. So the main thing of the tableau ops, you could just pick one of the actions on each of the cards and do them. It's yes. If yeah. you want, if you, you can use one of the actions for each of your cards on the side that you have chosen. So for example, this card has two actions. It has a taxation action and a commerce action that we will be getting into later, later. And, this and then also a commerce you action. can do a trade fair one of the main yes. ways yes. of this game to get money yes. so let's say i want to do a west trade fair the west trade fair starts here and oh. it goes along this white trail here and when it's when you have one of these many figures here it gives a coin to the player and continue here there's another coin to that player so basically, we distribute the coins yes. that are on the left most card. We first add one coin yeah. the into one place. coin to the person that called it. If we add two coins if we are three or four players. Yeah, okay. well, we aren't. And then we distribute whatever is there along the route. Yeah. So we are like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and he gets a coin. So then the, we continue, and he gets a coin. So these are these tokens here. They are your trade concessions. You are your trade agents. Basically, you you play them. Uh, some cards allow you to put them in place and you want to have the most of them as possible because basically they allow yeah. you to because, earn money yeah and they are part of one of the victory conditions so one of the victory conditions depends on having the more trade concessions on everybody else so uh, this is basically how the game works turn by turn we have to go now through the so, actions and through the victory conditions yes so let's start with the victory conditions uh, uh, let's start with the actions first no, no? Because, the victory they, conditions. because in order to understand the victory conditions you need to understand the, the actions okay. first i believe so uh, well, very quickly and very simply without going into too much details let's start from the one-off actions so some we of the cards start 
with the Inquisitor going in order. The Inquisitor, this action here, the blue action here. Oh, let's go from. Let's start from the one off. No. So the one at the bottom. Yes, because there are two actions. There are the actions that, that you do once you play the card, and yes. that's it. And then there are the abilities that you can use, and every turn, in principle, by using the tableau ops. Okay. So the ones at the bottom, they're very simple. So let's say I buy this one, the Spice Island. This allows me to change the trade route. So you know the way earlier when I was going here and delivering the money here. But if I play this card and I meet its requirements, I change the trade route to the Spice Island. So this allows me, let's say if I had more people up here, I would get more money than if I would go here. Yeah, so in principle, you want to change it in the way that, that is more convenient yeah, for you. More this, convenient to yourself. And this sort of cards usually also allow you to put no. tokens in play. Now, let me just show the token. So, most of the cards will allow you, if you want, to play some token in the region represented by the cards. Yeah. Okay. And then, another thing that we forgot to say on the trade route is that whenever it passes by through the places, in all the places that it passes by, we add an extra token oh, to yes, that sister. place. We forgot that. We forgot that. So in previous example, we had two coins to distribute. The trade routes were starting. Uh, trade route was starting from the, the the western side. We drop one coin to the first concession that we meet. A second coin to the last concession yes. that we that meet. That means that we are going to put one person here and another person Levy. here. And more that, troops. Yeah, there, more troops. More troops along the path. The so, knights and rooks represent yeah. uh, armies. So whoever is calling the trade fair will deploy one levy of, his, of their choice on one of the empty slots. And then we are going to pass by to the coronation action. Action. So this coronation action right here, the one with the crown, it allows you to get a king. So let's say I place this card and I play. I can incarnate. One of the people that are shown here on this side of the card. So Portugal, Aragon, France, Holy yes. Roman Empire. So let's say I wanted to choose France. I, I would, would just grab it. Grab France and place it here. No, I have the king. But you, let's say somebody already owned the Holy Roman Empire. I cannot grab the Holy Roman Empire off of that person. Yes, from with the coronation action, you can only get kingdoms that are still on the board. Yeah, yeah. and and you can. So basically, you're using your money to buy the friendship of a queen that will allow you to basically control a kingdom. Will control. Yes. The, the it will allow, allow you to influence her husband. Every time you get, grab a kingdom. Either with a coronation, that is the easiest way, or with another action, you can place one of your concession close to that kingdom. So if you take France, well, I should take a, another another pawn, yeah. but basically I put one of my pawns next to France, and that allows me to get more money during yeah. the trade fairs. No. All the other one one off, one off actions, they are all attack actions, and there are uh, three of them. No, do you want to yeah. show the well, player? Yeah, we'll explain those later. Um, so for now, um, I just want to say that the actions at the bottom, you can only use them once. You yes. cannot use them more than one time. And then for the conspiracy. Yeah, no, so, let's, not, let's, not give in, uh, let's not go into much detail on them. Let's just uh, give a quick overview. Uh, these are the one-off actions represented in the, in the player aid. We went through the, the uh, trade shifts, we went through the coronation. The other three are attack actions, conspiracy, peasant revolt, and crusade, and they allow you basically to take over one kingdom, even from one opponent. They have different conditions uh, that are explained on the player aid, so basically you depend, you have to compare your attackers, the agents that you have, that are usually the agents represented by the card, so this card or at least provided by the card, so this card allows me to launch a conspiracy with two additional rooks as attackers. If your attack is successful, there is there is no dice uh, to be thrown here. The, it is immediately clear whether you are going to win or not. If your attack is successful, you are going to grab the kingdom for yourself and add it 
to your tableau in place one your, your concessions around it as usual the last one shot action is the apostasy yeah so so the apostasy allows you to let's say i had um just for this can i find a card um yeah let's say i had the most the ottoman empire and i also had um let's find a card so and it, I also had a Catholic card, right? So cards that provide you with religious yes. icons. What would happen here was that if I have these two religious items, that would have been the Catholic and the Muslim icon, as it would be shown here. There's, there's a Catholic. Catholic. There's the, the Reformed. Yeah, the Reformed and the, the Muslim icon. These two cards would get discarded from my hand and yes. into the discard pile so if you apply an apostasy you decide to activate the apostasy ability everybody who has both cards so cards with both of those symbols in your in their tableau they lose both of those cards so they say yeah. all of the cards with with those two symbols yeah so this this is sort of like oh, this the the deep the, the the like a debuff to some like very good cards for example, the Ottoman Empire, which is one of the strongest nations. Yes. Its debuff is that it's it's religious nation. So this this makes the game more fair, as if it just had no religion. And uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. The, the Ottoman is can be removed from your hand if somebody plays an apostasy against you, and you have other religious cards uh, in your tableau as well. And this is about one-off actions. Mm -hmm. So very quickly. Then we have the abilities, card abilities that can be yeah. used on every turn. So on each, in your turn you can trigger your tableau ops either west or east. And you can use one of the abilities on each card. How do we go through them in one minute? Okay, I am going to explain them really Sh Shall we follow the... So for the Inquisitor action, let's say if I already had a bishop on the board here. Right? Right. And it, I will be able to let's say I have this card, I'd be able to use the Inquisitor action to move this bishop to another card. So let's say these cards were like this, I can move the bishop from here okay. to here. And what does the bishop do? The bishop literally just... I cannot use the actions on this card. Silence That's, is the card. Yeah, it silences the card. Now, for the next action, Commerce. Commerce is like a really easy one to explain. If I use Commerce, I could literally take a gold coin that is here, and take it. So the commerce action will say either east or west. Yeah. The behead will eliminate another card on yeah. the region shown yeah. on the, on your card. So if you have a behead Ottoman, yeah. you can only kill another Ottoman card. Yeah, for example, this card. Look, if I use behead, and this is here, yes. I have to use this behead on another Ottoman card. So I have to behead. I could discard this card. But beheading also costs this to go into the discard. But no, only if you kill a kingdom. Only if I kill a kingdom, yes. yeah. Yes, else, else you keep the behead card. Yeah. Uh, queens don't have their own region card, they take the region of their husband. Okay. Uh, tax card allow you to uh, tax a concession, yeah. their owner must so pay a, say... a florin or discard yeah. it. The repress mm -hmm. allows you to get, to repress one token and grab one money uh, out of it, so the re repressed tokens count for some of the attacks for the conspiracy. The repressed pawns are used for peasant revolts, and the repressed armies are used for noble conspiracies. The vote is used to use your concessions bordering yeah. a state to take control yeah, of it. Let's say if I owned papal states, I could turn papal states from a king to a republic. So this you can do with any of your attacks. But with vote, you can also grab power states from one opponent. So if you yeah. have power states and I have more concessions around it, I can vote and take it away from you. The Corsairs allow you to move pirates around. We don't yeah. have pirates now, but some of the cards allow you to place pirates. So yeah, let's see if I quickly grab a pirate Basically, here they, and they are here. used to, to kill somebody else's yeah. concessions. Let's say if, if it was here, I can move it to here and it would kill... My concession. Yeah, his concession. The siege allows you to kill any of the uh, rooks yeah. let's or... say if i had a siege here in papal states 
I could siege here and I can remove a unit there. And finally, the campaign is a ability uh, that shows up on kingdoms. Yeah. It allows you to attack a bordering kingdom. So the campaign uses knights. You have to pay it. You have to pay one coin for each knight that you use. Right, if you have. Yeah. Let's say if I were if I own Aragon and I wanted to attack here, I'd have to spend one florin to attack Portugal, and both of these would eliminate each other. Yes, so you, yeah. don't, you don't do anything in this case. But if you have two horses, you have to attack from Ottoman against, let's say, Hungary. Yeah. You have two attacker and one defender. One defender and one attacker kill each other. You have one horse left. You are able to take over yeah. Hungary. In Hungary, you take over, basically, the kingdom of Hungary. So there are more details, more nuances around these rules, but we just give you the, the basic idea. And now, to finish off... Fi finish, yes. Yeah, the we're victory going conditions. To, we're going to explain the victory conditions. Now for the Renaissance victory. Let's start with the Imperial, that's the easiest. No, no, we'll do an order then. So, with to own, you have to own the most republics, so you'd have to own the most cards it, that look again, like this. Again, you get a republic by attacking one of your own kingdoms, if, if you flip that into a republic. And then you also have to have two more law icons than everybody. Okay. So these, these lady with the volunteer yes. and some some um places also have a law icon yes. which is good for and now that we've done the renaissance victory we will explain the globalization victory so you have to have more ship icons and plus two concessions than everybody else yes good very simple and for this Really easy, you just have to have two more kings. This is the Not republics, to just understand. kings. The easiest to understand, not necessarily the easiest to accomplish. And our first game we played with only Imperial yeah. Victory. Now, this is the most complicated. Most complicated one. to understand. You have to have the supreme religion. So, in other words, let's let's say that they're, the Muslims have. So, so, you have to look at the religious kingdoms. At the beginning of the game, only Pablo State is religious and Mamluk. This is Catholic, this is yeah. Muslim, but this can change if you use religious wars. Any of the king, kingdoms here can yeah. become religious. And it, so, in other words, the person, the religion with the most bishops and the most icons out on the board is the superior it, religion. With the most bishops and with the most tokens, troops, troops army tokens on their cards. For yeah. example, now I think it would be the Muslim. Yes, because they have the most people. So for the most for the for Islam to be sub, uh, superior, it must have the most token. So there should be none here at the beginning of the game, and at least the the most bishops in play. In this case, this will be Islam will be the uh, superior religion, the religion with supremacy. If you have more cards with the Muslim token with the Muslim icon, where where is one? Um, right here. Ottoman, perhaps, if you have the most cards with the Muslim icon, you can claim victory for yeah. yourself. And then another interesting, yeah. The, the default victory, yeah. if none of the victory conditions are achieved, by the time all the cards are uh, finished here, whoever has the most uh, art icons, statue icons, wins the game. Yeah. And to win the game, to like activate one of these victories, you have to find a comment and buy one. Yes, that's very important. To so buy the comet, when you buy a comet, you can activate any one of these. Because the, at the beginning of the game, they are all locked. You cannot use yeah. one of them. For so sure, for example, the comets are somewhere hidden in this deck, yeah, no. around the bottom I of the deck. I didn't put them there. Yeah. It's just for but sure. they will be somewhere in the deck. There are two comets on the east and two comets on the west. You yeah. pay one action to buy the comet card, and you immediately unlock one of the victory conditions. Okay. Anybody can use that victory condition. And then when, if you want to win, you have to spend another You have another to spend action another action to declare, to declare victory. your victory. Yes. And that is Pax Renaissance in less than 20 minutes. Goodbye. Uh, oh, wait, wait, one moment. There will be a follow-up video where we will uh, describe how um, many of the rules that may appear a bit weird on this game are, are very closely tied with the game team. Thank you so much and see you on the second part. Bye. Yeah, bye.